of people can't avoid that because of where they live. They really can't move, but um, it is a big problem. And the exhaust, you know, from cars, uh, I think there isn't as much lead as there used to be, but, <laughs> uh, yeah. but lead, and mercury and cadmium and, and other metals that are potentially harmful to the brain are, are in polluted air. Some people work in an environment where their work environment is polluted with um, heavy metals, you know, that <clears throat> your body doesn't need them and, and uh, they can be damaging to brain and other organs. So, um, you know, that's a potential problem, but but some people take too much of these minerals in supplements <laughs> yeah. and in food. And um, like, for example, one is iron. Um, we all need a little bit of iron, a tiny, tiny bit of iron. We need one milligram a day. Um, it's not absorbed very well. So the recommendations here in the U.S. are to take, I think it's eight milligrams a day to get that one milligram. But some people will take, you know, iron supplements who are not anemic. They don't need you know, extra iron, they can get it in their food, you know, very easily. And, um, um, and zinc is another one too, which was very popular, you know, with the pandemic, <clears throat> take zinc, take zinc. Okay. So zinc is important. It's, it's involved in so many different, um, enzymatic reactions. Um, it's involved, you know, heavily in the immune system and, um, but, um, for, if you take, 49 milligrams or over, that's considered the upper tolerable limit beyond which adverse effects can happen from taking too much zinc. So it's possible to take too much zinc. And <clears throat> some people will get it in a multivitamin that they're eating. They're also getting it in food. It's not too hard to get it from food. Um, and then they might also take an additional zinc supplement and they're over, well over that 49 milligram you know, limit it beyond which they can have adverse effects. So you have to be careful about it. And, and, um, odd, you know, like zinc, um, can, um, cause effect smelling, smell and taste, you know, for example, and there's some sprays, you know, where you put zinc up in your nose and this kind of thing, and, and they can affect taste and, and smell. Um, so, um, it just had to be very careful. So I have a lot of little tips like that in the book. <clears throat> yeah you do mention some supplements that you should take i was mm -hmm. uh, thinking like uh omega-3 fatty acids in mm -hmm. uh, particular but uh also magnesium and mm -hmm. uh, uh nr nicotinamide nicotinamide riboside yeah right yeah that's one um that's it's being studied quite a lot mm -hmm. um for cog cognition you know for memory um, but for many other conditions too. Yeah. Um, and yeah, nicotinamide, um, is it's vitamin B3, it's niacin, mm. you know, most people would know it as ni niacin and some people might take niacinamide. There were some studies going on for Alzheimer's with niacinamide, but, um, you know, the goal is to keep up these levels of it's, uh, NAD mm. or NAD plus it's sometimes written. And this is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide <laughs> yeah. and um, it's involved in hundreds of, of um, metabolic, like it's involved with um, hundreds of enzymes mm -hmm. in, in metabolism, including um, in, uh, making ATP, this basic energy molecule um, and um, recycling it, you know, that kind of thing. Um, the ribose, well, this particular form of it, nicotine, nicotinamide riboside converts very well to NID and AD it increases NAD levels and um, the riboside in it uh, ribose is a sugar it's a five uh, what they call a five carbon sugar and it is part of the um, ATP molecule itself you know the energy molecule it's also part of DNA and RNA you know as your you know, constantly, we're constantly um, making new DNA and RNA copies of it, you know, to make proteins and all of that type of thing. Um, so um, supplementing it with it in increases NAD levels. And um, uh, so, you know, that's why getting enough of this particular vitamin is very important. And um, so, and it is being studied, you know, for Alzheimer's yeah. and other conditions like that. So that that's what, you know, why I suggest getting that. And um, <clears throat> there's another 
like thiamine, um, which is um, vitamin B1, is very mm-hmm. hard to get um, sometimes from food, getting it. Um, it's in whole grains, for example, but it's hard to get enough of it. The um, forms of it that they are adding to like a refined <clears throat> flour and white rice, they've mm-hmm. removed, you know, basically the parts of the grains that contain these vitamins. So um, they found this out fairly quickly, like when they started making refined white flour uh, and refined rice, uh, mainly in Asia, that people were getting berry berry, which is a, a very serious, you know, potentially fatal uh, condition from a deficiency of this vitamin. So they started adding it back, but they add it back as a synthetic vitamin. It's not the form that your body uses. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it, it probably, it, you know, it solves the problem of not getting berry berry, but, um, it's not really the form that, that you need, which is called thiamine diphosphate. You can't find it like that, but there's one called benfotiamine that does turn to thiamine diphosphate in your body. And it's utilized much better than these other synthetic vitamins. Mm-hmm. So um, that's a reason why I recommend doing that. Uh, it's also, you know, thiamine is also involved in, in ATP, making that energy molecule and just hundreds of other enzymes, you know, that it's needed for. So it's, you don't need much of it, but you do have to replenish it every day. It's one of these water soluble vitamins that, you know, it leaves your body. If you don't use it, it doesn't store in your body. This video is brought to you by Bioptimizers. Magnesium is a crucial mineral for hundreds of reactions in the body and impacts everything, including sleep and muscle and bone health. It is difficult to get sufficient magnesium through our food. In our efforts to remain fit and healthy, my wife and I frequently exercise, after which it's important to recover well and get restful sleep. To help us with this, we chose Magnesium Breakthrough from Bioptimizer because it blends all seven essential forms of magnesium into one effective supplement while also using all natural ingredients and being gluten, soy, and lactose free. It has improved our recovery and sleep quality since we've been taking it. And we are happy to tell you that Bioptimizers are offering a 10% discount for Magnesium Breakthrough to Modern Healthspan audience. Just go to www.magnesiumbreakthrough.com modern or click on the link in the description to get a 10% discount with coupon code MODERN10. Thank you for your support. But do you see that the uh, Alzheimer's organizations uh, are coming to accept diet as a solution or at least a a way to um, ameliorate Alzheimer's? Do you see that message as being more accepted? Uh, And could you talk a little bit about what you're doing in in terms of the speaking and so on? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, I I was pressing the Alzheimer's Association like early on um, to get them. I, I even talked to their medical director at one point and some people high in their organization, this was early, this was around 2009. Um, and, you know, I wrote to them, they wouldn't write back, you know, so then I talked to them in person about it. And they said, well, this isn't the kind of thing that we study, we study drugs. So you need to get, you know, some government agency basically to study, you know, uh, diet, you know, something like coconut oil or MCT oil, you know, we're just not going to study that. Um, so, but, you know, and for years they didn't, you know, they basically, um, said, well, coconut oil, you know, their, their official stance on it was coconut oil hasn't been studied, so we can't recommend it. Well, (laughs) you know, if you won't fund (laughs) studies, you know, how does it get done? Pharmaceutical companies aren't going to pay for studies, you know, because it's food, it's not drugs that they can make money from. Um, but, um, in 2017, they actually had the first session ever at the Alzheimer's Association conference on ketones. I got to go to it. It was in London. Um, and, uh, it was a two hour session, Dr. Stephen Kunain, who has done a ton of the research, um, in Canada, you know, he, um, he presented and several other speakers. Um, so that was a big step forward, you know, that they, okay, acknowledged it and they had actually paid for some of his research with MCT oil. 
um, funded that and they have been funding him for other studies since then. So he's working now on one with a ketone supplement called ketone salts. He wanted to study the ketone ester, but they had trouble finding a placebo for it uh, because it doesn't taste good. It's hard to, <laughs> you know, you have to come up with a placebo that also doesn't taste good that people might think could be the ketone ester, you know, when you're doing a study, you have to design it that way. But um, so right now he's studying ketone salts and uh, we don't know the results yet on that, but, but those are out on the market. The ketone ester and ketone salts are available out on the market and both, especially the ester greatly increases ketone levels. The ketone salts increase it quite a bit more than MCT oil. And if you take the ketone salts and you also take some MCT oil, it enhances the effect of the ketones, uh, which is pretty interesting. You know, so these are out there and they're available on the market. Um, uh, the salts came along in 2016 and the ketone ester, which is Dr. Beach's ester, has been out since 2018. And it's, it's uh, marketed to, because it hasn't been studied yet for Alzheimer's, there aren't Alzheimer's studies out there. It's marketed to athletes, which have been studied um, at Oxford. Dr. Kieran Clark and her group has studied Olympic athletes, Olympic rowers. Um, they've studied uh, bicyclists, uh, Tour de France. A lot of people uh, in the Tour de France have been taking ketone esters the last few years to try to enhance their performance. Uh, which is interesting. And since it's a natural molecule that your body makes from fat, it's not considered illegal <laughs> to take right. this. But um, so, some of the studies, for example, that she did with athletes early on, um, these were Olympic rowers and they improved their their times. Uh, it was by 2%, which mm -hmm. is considered remarkable for an Olympic you know, elite athlete to improve their time when they took a single dose of the ketone ester. Um, and that she's done all kinds of studies, you know, um, looking at muscle biopsies, you know, and, and doing the ketone ester with and without glucose and all types of things like that. So basically the ester did get FDA um, recognition for use in um, young, healthy adults uh, for athletic performance. That was the claim that could be made, you know, about the ketone ester because it was studied in that way. Um, since then, they did do toxicity testing on older people, 28 day studies, and there were only there were over 2000 doses and there were only like six um, negative effects and they were like upset stomach and uh, very mild effects like that, you know, the people had so. Um, so now it's it's kind of recognized that healthy people can take it, but, um, but it's still, you know, the studies are still pending. And there's one in progress now in the U.S., people with metabolic syndrome, which is prediabetes, are studying 150 people um, and looking at the impact on cognition with the ketone ester. So that study is in progress and it's supposed to come out the results sometime in 2023, late 2023. So, you know, it's just been such a slow process. And um, the Alzheimer's Association, they have uh, the last three years now, they've had um, more sessions on ketones and um, more speakers talking about ketones. Um, and uh, they're mostly talking about ketogenic diet or MCT oil or the combination. There's one group that's been studying um, ketogenic diet plus MCT oil. And, and they are talking just much more about lifestyle, about changing diet, Mediterranean diet and other like the DASH diet for high blood pressure that's been studied and shown to be beneficial, you know, it's very similar to the Mediterranean diet with a few kind of differences. There's more emphasis on limiting salt, you know, in the DASH diet, uh, limiting it to um, like, uh, if you have high blood pressure, limiting to 1500 milligrams a day, and the average person limiting to 2300 milligrams a day is kind of what they recommend. But, you know, so there are, there is more attention to nutrition, mm -hmm. but the thing that bothers me <laughs> is that, you know, drugs like Aduhelm and Lucanumab, this new one that they just approved, the FDA just approved, um, they never claim, they, they don't show improvement in cognition, you know, when people take them. Ketones do, and there are studies that the Alzheimer's Association has funded themselves. Well, the drugs make the big news. Why aren't the ketones, the studies of ketones that are being presented at the Alzheimer's Association also making the news. I just don't understand it, you know, because they actually improve people. They improve the symptoms, you know, 
there are bigger studies in progress. There are quite a few smaller studies that have accumulated now and, um, and medium sized studies. And yeah, I'm not sure what they're waiting for, you know? So yeah. my goal this year is to push them <laughs> and they have, their leadership has changed, you know, since, um, I first met these, you know, folks in 2008, 2009, and I I wanted to talk to them about this and say, you know, this is very hopeful. And, uh, you know, but when they have even the tiniest hint of a drug possibly slowing down and decline, even in animals, it broadcasts like it's major news. You know, you see this breakthrough every day, breakthrough in Alzheimer's disease. There's some report of an animal study that comes out, some enzyme they found deep in the brain that if they can target this enzyme with a drug, then, you know, maybe people with Alzheimer's will improve. You hear this every day, but where, where, where's the news about ketones? And, you know, so I'm doing my best. I keep writing books about it and yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, talking I, about it <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, it's getting out there compared to 2008. It's much more out there than it was. I mean, it, nobody knew about it. You know, people didn't know about it. And I, and a lot of people do now, but many, many more people need to to know about this. They need to know, and they need to be able to find out how to do it, which is why I write books, you know, how there's a lot of how to in this book. Um, I have a website, you know, where people can get information, I have a lot of videos on there. I have the scientific articles on these studies. I have articles that I've written. Um, and, um, you know, it's called, it's coconutketones.com. So it's uh, C-O-C-O-N-U-T-K-E-T-O-N-E-S.com. And I have a whole lot of information. I started the website at the end of 2008 just to get information out there, you know, and people need to know where to get, you know, what, where, where to get all of this. So, um, so there's a lot of information that's accumulated on there and I'm always working on it, trying to make it the website better and, you know, adding new information.